The RC SK5 PDC controller is designed exclusively for Canon and it's optimized and limited to work with Canon cameras. It's perfect if you want to get started and it may be enough for most people. The beauty of the collaboration between Canon and Skyhoy on this product is that you don't pay for more than you need and yet you have the world's most powerful panel management platform behind the product. The RC SK5 Pro license will unlock RC SK5 to control any camera brand and model, to integrate video switches and routers for tally and monitoring, it will give you custom preset labels. It will also allow unlimited number of cameras to be added and you can customize it even more. It will also be open to full integration into the Skahoy ecosystem of panels, either via the raw panel protocol or as a host system integrating any other panel, a stream deck, X keys, touch UI, you may want to add through software applications. In other words, it's the full power of the bright and shining blue pill platform that is found in almost every Skyhoy product. In this video, we'll go through all that good stuff and show you how that works. We are coming straight out of a demonstration of RCSK5 and the Frameshot Pro. We don't need the Frameshot Pro with the Pro license or the Pro license doesn't have to be on the RCSK5 to use the Frameshot Pro, but it does unlock additional features. And I'll also show you that. But this is what the reactor looks like in the still limited version of this one. So for instance, the limits were that if I wanted to add devices, you see, I can add almost as many ca Canon cameras as I want. But if I want to add devices, I'm limited to Canon devices. I also had limits on which software packages I could install, for instance, and also in configurations there were some limits to uh, what I could select, the sections I could select and so on. So yes, there are limits that makes the RC SK5 perfect for a Canon environment. I have already assigned the license to the, this product and it will be automatically be picked up as I go into the settings page. If your controller is online, that little green icon means that RC SK5 is connected to the internet. So it can reach out to our servers. If I go in here, then you will see this by default. It just has the base license, but now I reload the browser. So on the second reload in here, it has now picked up the RCSK Pro license because I assigned it just before starting this recording. So now this unit has the full power that I was talking about. Before we can actually see it, we should go into packages well, we do see it already because now you can see all the device cores that Skyhoy offers. So everything that says core in front of it is basically some device integration we have done. We have AJ, Colorbox, Kumo routers, Ari cameras, Baco Event Master, Biamp, Tessera. We have Blackmagic, ATEM, Blackmagic Camera Control, Hyperdeck, SmartView, Video Hops from Blackmagic Design. And the list will go on like this. We have NewTek, we have Panasonic, different protocols like HTTP, Media, OptiCore, OSC, ROS Talk, TCP, TSL, UDP, you name it. I mean, this list goes on and on and on. And at the bottom, you see some other things which are not device integrations, but actual applications like integration with Stream Deck, Tally Lamps, Touch UIs, X Keys, Smart Panels from Riedel, Hit Devices in general. We, <laughs> we have Raw Panel Pac-Man, which is essentially a fun thing. Yeah, you can try that out yourself. But it's just to tell you that this opened up immediately to all the packages the system has. We need to actually restart Reactor to also see this power get into Reactor. So I'll just restart Reactor. And the moment I've done that, so now we just see the panel blinks for a moment. If I go back to the home screen, you'll see that in the devices list here, if I go to add devices, I can now add much more than Canon. So basically all the models inside each of these cores, we have here a list of like 300 devices coming out of our device cores that we can now add. I can also discover devices. And I think that would be quite interesting to do because uh, apart from the Canon, if I search Canon, you see, yeah, now we see the Canon cameras on our network, but I also see so much else. I have IDA cameras. I have here, um, what is this? Some other camera, JVC. We have, um, unfortunately, Panasonic cameras doesn't appear here, but we can set that up manually. Um, there's also ATEM switches, etc. So there's a lot of good stuff that we can now add to the product. We also have other options for configurations we can choose. Now, this list is long because the Frameshot Pro is connected in here. So if I pick anything else that has Frameshot Pro, it would allow us to actually hook up a PDC Pro, etc. 
I want to start by creating a new project. That also gives you an idea about how projects work. So I can pro license fun. Just create a new project here and there we go. With this one, we now have a blank slate. I can go back to the previous project anytime. I just go up to manage projects and I select that one. But now we can go in here, we can look for devices on our network. Let's just filter for Canon to add back a Canon CIN100 camera. So that would be nice to just get done. And then let's find some el something else that we can add um, as a device. That would be this uh, Ada camera here. So we could uh, pick that one to the list and it is installing the device call and it should be connected in a short moment. So while we're waiting for that, we could probably add something else. Now let's do this manually and then search Panasonic because I know I have a Panasonic camera on the network, which is this one. And it has this IP address. If I'm not mistaken, I can save that. You see, uh, the ADA camera was connected, we have the Panasonic, it's installing the core, it's connected to the camera now. And sometimes we have usernames and passwords which are necessary to connect to the cameras. It may happen, depends on the camera model and so on, but everything would be uh, configurable inside of, of this one. So on the camera selector on the product, we have CIN100. So we see that camera is now moving. You see it's moving just next to me here. We have the ADA camera somewhere in the universe and we have the um, Panasonic camera, another place under my network. It's not in this room, so I can't show you really. But you can see that the settings up here are changing. And if you look at the contents of the menu, the menu also has a tendency of change a little bit. So for these two, we have basically hmm, seven pages in the menu for the um, Panasonic camera. So it has some limited configurations I can choose from. If I go to the ADA camera, I have more or less the same eight pages it looks like uh, that I can choose between here and I can go back to home exposure, white balance, focus exposure and so on. Those things that you do there would be the same that you will find on our PTC Fly, you'll find it on PTC Extreme, the Skahoy products that um, you may be used to because the RCSK5 is essentially now unlocked into that same universe. It also has additional powerful features, hence these uh, dedicated knobs and so on, which may or may not be activated into these configurations, but surely they are for Canon. And by time, you may also find them activated for some of these other configurations. This is something we would do on popular requests because everything is configurable. Or you can even do it that yourself if you if you want. So that's also possible. So that was the camera selector. You see how it was now possible to mix and match different brands and models into this camera selector so easily by just adding them in here by having the Pro License installed. The presets up here is also interesting because with the Pro License, you can give them custom labels. So if we click the camera selector, you can scroll all the way out to the side of this one and you find a little button called presets. So for this camera, CIN100, I now can type in alternative labels for my presets. Actually, let's just add a CIN700. Uh, we generally don't want to do that in the camera selector list. We prefer to do it in this way. And let me see if we can find the CIN700 or maybe we'll just add it manually actually. So CIN700. N700, we have it right here and type in the IP address for it like this. There we go. Now it's added. It is here. It is camera number four. Can we move it? Yes, we can. There we go. And you see the picture here. So I want to start out by finding a nice framing. Actually, I already do have framings on my presets. So let's just recall this one. Okay, that is my preset number one. So let's let's like a wide shot. And if I go into the camera selector, I scroll out here for camera number four, the CIN700, I can type in label and write wide shots. Okay, notice what happens on the display. It says wide shot straight ahead. And then let's see what is on preset number two. That is like color chart. So I'll type in color chart. It says color chart now. What is this? Yoda. And what is this? Princess Leia. I'm not sure if I can type or spell it right. Hopefully I did. Preset number five, that's Yoda again. Let's do something else. I'll just call it RH because that is essentially the two letters. Now I can move on like this. Actually, I will because if I go to the second page and it is kind of the point that is I could have like up to 100 presets in this way. 
Now we have preset 100. Oh, preset 100 is actually set. So let's just check what is that. H-O-J. So H-O-J could be my title for this one. Again, it now says H-O-J in the display. In this way, you should be able to use labels that helps you to actually manage all those presets on your controller. That's super, super helpful. And it's available with the Pro license for the RCSK5. We can also add tally from uh, ATEM switches. So let's say that it's actually hooked up with an ATEM switcher like uh, this, this one. I have an ATEM television studio on the network and the red and the green colors for my preview and my program rows would be nice to have down here. So we could assume that camera number one, two, three, and four would be input number one, two, three, and four here or in any other order. And we could actually pull that information out of the ATEM. Let me show you how that works because it's also a pro feature that we are doing in this way. I think we start by adding an ATEM switcher right here. We can search ATEM and see if we can find the television studio. HD, that's the one. Okay, there we go. And um, for tally forwarding, we need to configure it because there are different things inside the ATEM you could draw out. It could be one of the ME rows. It would be ME number one, but you could also choose uh, other configurations. It could be... Um, uh, probably, uh, no, well, wait, um, It's it has something called global tally flags. Oh, these are details for different videos. But anyway, this is going to work and it will pull out tally from that. So what we need in addition is to tell the system here which cameras are associated with which inputs on the ATEM switcher. So I could essentially just type one here and then press the plus one button and then it would basically replicate that down through the list like one, two, three, four for the tally index here. And that is all it takes to make sure that we have tally here. It does say it is disconnected. I am not happy about that. And why is that? Mm, it did not set the IP address. I don't know why, but let me see if I remember this correctly. Maybe it's even shown in here. Uh, let's just try, see if I was right. Yes, okay, now, and you do have tally light here. so. If I select this one, I know it's on preview, so not program. I can safely move the camera, but this is a warning. I should be careful with the CIN 700 because obviously that would be on uh, live feed right now. I can change this around. I could also make it four, three, two, and one. And now it would essentially be the other way around. So let's just pull up the uh, ASM software control. And you can see as I'm making a cut, those colors are changing around. And uh, of course now camera number one is like, uh, assuming it was number four. I just changed the order. What is routing? Because that's another thing that is very useful. If you're a PDC operator, you typically want, if I press that button, you want to see on the screen ahead of you, what is the, you know, the camera that you're operating. So the selected camera would always be available on the screen to you. That is possible as well. And I will do that with an ATA Kumo router just to show you something else. This is, uh, I'm afraid not auto, oh, it is auto discoverable. Fine, awesome. So I'll just select it. Inside of routing triggers, we may want to configure. Yes, because we want to set which output it is. So the Kumo router has a web UI here. The destination, we just need to figure out what destination output of the router would be routed to my screen. Let's say it's 11. So destination would be 11. In here, you would just choose output 11. There we go. And then we can close this one down. Going back to the camera selector, we would now go into the routing index. And now again, just for simplicity, let's just type in one, two, three and four. And as I've done that, we should now be able to actually, as I'm selecting cameras, to see that this router is changing around. It would be most easy to see if I open up this web UI and then notice the source rows here. Let's try camera number one, camera number two, camera number three, and camera number four. So that's how routing would work going to a screen ahead of you. You can configure quite a lot. I mentioned that configuration is essentially limitless when you do it with the Pro license. Well, <clears throat> the, my favorite way to scare people quite a bit in this system is to show them the tree. If you open the tree, you get into some like infinite rabbit hole of configuration where you can like dive deep into layers upon layers of things that will change as you move around in the system and uh, change things. Maybe I could do that. Maybe I can use the camera selector and you can see some stuff is changing in here. It's a pretty cool system we have done, but it's also pretty complex if you want to go into those depths. And we have a lot of loyal users who love it. But for many of you, you should just keep that stashed away and then use our perfectly fine 
paging paradigm. If you do that, we have this configuration. We are now on the user section. And user section essentially is like a layer on top of everything. And on this layer, you can build multiple pages. I think that's a pretty cool little application, actually. So um, what was it we wanted to do? Uh, I think I want to, let's, let's put a cut button onto this. Uh, that could be interesting. Now, there are different, we can actually do this across um, both controllers. Oh, wait, now actually the Frameshare Pro is disconnected. We are only on the Canon RCS K5. By the way, if you want to use the Frameshare Pro, there are configurations that will invite you to do so, but in a, in a way we can just, you know, remove this one. But let's just keep it for a moment. Going back to configuration, we will use the user section to build something on top here. So I need to decide where would my cut button be. At this moment, I have a free key here. Essentially, my camera selector, I have only four cameras, so it would be easy to just pick this one. But you can pick any key on, on the controller, actually. Um, if, I, if I just click on this one, I can now assign a function to any device that I have my four cameras, but it could also be the ATEM. And you can also search just cut, not curt, but cut. And then it will find cut as and um, a behavior inside of the ATEM television studio. So I'll pick this one. And actually to be, you know, honestly, it's already working. So let's just go to the ATEM switcher and you'll see that I have cut on my ATEM switch, just assigned like that. That was useful, right? But I think you can also, just to give you a glimpse of how you can configure, you know, be like um, more globally cool things onto your, your RCSK5, let's just create a new page and let's make it a non-transparent page. Non-transparent means that it will blank out all functionalities except the ones we assign. So um, we we'll just call this page for switching, all right? So we call this switching. And if I move to the switching page, you'll see the control is essentially blanking out, but I could now drag across these buttons. I could go into my ATEM configuration. Let's just type in program. We have program preview, which is like a switcher function. Pick the ME row, just pick some input. We can use the batch editor to quickly change input number one, two, three, four, five, six on this one and say done. Okay, so now, I am actually switching my ATEM switcher. This is how quickly that was done, guys. I just set up a preview program row for an ATEM switcher in, I don't know, less than 17 seconds or something. I really like that. And you, you can continue to just build anything into this. Now, the cool thing is if you go back to the background, you're now back to all the PDC operations. So this is why uh, where we are basically now working with, oh, see, it has tally. It has green tally on top. Can you see it on the video? It's actually... Just notice, I think it may be a little bit difficult. It's green right now, but if I do cut, it will change to red. And if I just flip away, it will turn off. Okay, so now it's off. But I know colors can be difficult to see on screen. Anyway, what I wanted to do is to now take that cut button and not place it here. I want to put it into the switching. So we'll just put cut up here again. So we'll type in cut, select cut. Now we have the cut button sitting right here. You see that is happening both on screen and on the actual product. But back on the background, what I want to do is to make the camera five button a gateway to actually enable that layer. So now I'll just go into the system. No, wait, navigation, because navigation is where you can switch page. So by assigning this one to switching page, now as I press it, it is going into the switching page. And on the switching page, I should essentially do the same. Uh, I should have like an, an exit key. It could be this one up here. Now you can go back and design that. I can also use the one called go to page and then I can say, okay, I wanna go to the background page as I'm pressing this one. So now this would be like my exit key and this would bring me into this one. If I am here, and I want to uh, open show more, I can also change the labels for this one. So for instance, we could uh, change the text line. Instead of automatically be derived, we could basically type in exit. And now it will say exit. We can also pick a different color, which would be amber if I wanted to and make it. Yeah, I think that's pretty nice. Okay, so it says exit. I press it. I'm back here, background. So maybe instead of background, we wanted to change what this one says and so on. But you can basically continue as you want. Just keep in mind that even the functions out of the box, like being able to manipulate if you are back here on the 20 pages coming by default in the uh, configuration on the Canon um, uh, RCSK5, we have 20 pages that we can 
basically manipulate here. I sh show that in a different video, but the same is true if you go to the ADA camera. We saw that we had like seven pages. So if I go in here, that would be the seven pages you see right now. So I'm also able to customize what we see inside of here. And actually on the home screen, we saw a few fields which are not available on that camera. So that's a very good example of something where you might want to, let me see. I just want to drag this into the center. Okay, with this one, I could then say, okay, I want to change this one to, um, let me see, just make it generic like that. And then Visca cameras, I could search for something for Visca cam cameras, um, gain control, let's pick this one. And now I would have gain control on this one. Um, and in this way, you can customize your your menus you can even add new pages if you want like new just add this one in and if you go to this one you see that we just created a new page in that menu so that is always still available inside the menu system we can add the frameshot pro let's do that because uh, if i do so and let's just choose the one called pro configuration this one there is one thing different from what we saw in the in the previous examples and um We'll just add a few cameras here. And that is, we can now add something called quick classes. And with quick class, um, we have like small snippets of configuration you can choose for different things. And um, they can be configured in here with inputs and outputs and so on. And um, all I need to do now to show you that this would work is to add the actual Frameshot Pro. So now it is added. And so the point is, in the video where you used the standard license on the RCSK5, the Frameshot Pro would have these just being blank user keys. But when you have the Pro license, it makes sense to open it up for what is called um, Quick Classes. And Quick Classes, I just added two, uh, AJ Kumo and an ASM Television Studio, which gives you some out of the box functionality here where you can, uh, in this case, you can actually adjust uh, the, the volume of different input sources. That's the one that we chose. But if you want to change that, I'm pretty sure that we can do that inside of here by basically picking a different quick uh, bar ATEM audio configuration. We have macros, we have a super source control, video switcher uh, control, et cetera, on these six buttons. And they, there is a little menu associated with it out here. Uh, in the other video, I also show you how visual presets work. Uh, but for your information, that is essentially giving you super nice thumbnails that if we press and hold here, then you can um, basically store presets and have that thumbnail show up in the display and you can change around. And that helps you to recall and remember presets pretty well. So that's really cool. I also mentioned that this would open up RCSK5 for being a host panel it is possible to add more panels and there'll be other panels on the network. You already see here that we have a master key 48 for mega panel. We have a rec control XK1. We have a PC extreme somewhere on the network and just clicking here, it would add that product in to the configuration. It would be available on the configuration page. Actually, there you have the PDC Extreme in the simulation page. You have that product in here. And this is what that PDC Extreme, wherever it is on my network, would look right now. Because we have asked RCSK5 to be the host of including the management of all these panels. You see, that is what we did all the time with the Frameshot Pro, where you see the thumbnails um, between those two cameras. It's also shown here in the simulator. So that's that's really nice. So that is one way you can go. But there's also the other way, which is if you go into Packages and hit the Hardware Manager, you can enable Listen on Port. And if you do that, it means the RCSK5 will open up itself to be available from the outside world to be integrated by other panels. So that's like the opposite. That is, as I now do it, it's just ready for raw panel connections. So it has an IP address and a port. You can connect to it by um, uh, TCP connections and you can work with the panel remotely. So I'll just put that back to where we came from. I mentioned like packages for UIs and um, one thing that I could desire to show you would be the touch. So if I just enable this one called touch and I install this package, it's actually able to create like a little touch screen UI. The XPanel touch application needs a little bit of configuration here. You see it is um, currently set to be active and uh, I need to select a specific view that I like. I do like to have the frame shot view because that would allow me to actually use the touch screen to create 
these um, or to um, assign these thumbnails to it. So that's a useful little thing. And then I want to have a 19.5 by nine, which would fit with my telephone. And let me see, WebSocket port would be all fine and good. So I'll just save and restart this application. And I could also auto start it for the future so that when I reboot the controller, it will also pull this one up. Now on my IP address here, if I open up a new tab, I can type in that port and you see that it does this this panel. I can now go to this IP address on my phone and I would be able to see thumbnails the moment I have added it in here. So um, let me just remove this guy. And then for the Frameshot Pro, I think, can we right click it maybe? No, we can't. Okay, I'll delete. So I'll now select a new panel, search for panels on the network. And you see it's finding the XP Touch frame shot, which is coming out of our own IP address. So if I select this guy, I now have that same functionality, but it will be over here on the Touch UI. Mm -hmm. So now the Touch UI could be on my phone, on an iPad, is now following along. And if I, on the Touch UI, click like, um, let's just pick this preset. We should be able to see this camera move around. So. I'm just selecting that. On a phone, the web UI from surfed out of the RCSK5 will look like this. So you can see that I am able to operate PDC angles from the camera by now pushing these buttons quite easily on my phone. And of course, if I change camera, my phone follows along and I can now also hold and you know, to store a preset and I could now move this camera to a different position and I can press and hold to store another preset and I can now move between these two, as you would expect, responding to the camera selector on the RCSK5. In the same way, you can add X key panels. These are USB devices, quite popular, many different form factors they have. One thing that I like in particular is their foot pedal. And with this one, you can have something called cruise control on your RCSK5. So please look that up, search for what cruise control is and how that works. And finally, the very, very famous um, um, Stream Deck panels. Uh, we have Stream Deck, Deck Mini here. We have uh, the Stream Deck XL and the original form factors, the, um, also the, the Stream Deck Plus, I think it's called, with encoders that can all be added. I think we had one on the network here. And by the way, these USB devices go into the USB plug on the back side of the panel. And as they have then been identified and included by running the X panel, X keys or Stream Deck applications, then they'll be found in this list, just like you see here, XP Stream Deck MK2, which is probably somewhere else on a blue pill device on our network. But if I add it, it will look like this. And just to quickly show you how it's integrated into the simulator, it will have this visual look inside of Reactor and this uh, the, the environment in the web UI of the RCSK5. This video has essentially been a tour de force of all the Skahoy features in our ecosystem. It gave me a chance to go through all those nice, cool things for PC controllers and more in addition to. So that's pretty cool. And I thank you for watching this. Don't miss out on news from Skahoy in general. So please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel here and follow us on social media. Sign up for our newsletter if you prefer that. And of course, any questions you have will be happily answered by our friendly support and sales staff. And you can reach them on support at skahoy.com.